Good morning on this uh, Boxing Day morning. Uh, here we are recording back to, uh, feels like we're going back to the days uh, when we were in lockdown and uh, Tom and Ben and myself were here uh, recording and here we are again. But uh, I hope you had a really great Christmas day. Um, it's Boxing Day and uh, we're going to uh, sing God's praises, going to hear God's word. We're going to see what's happening with uh, some of the children. Uh, we're going to look back to the past, think about the present and think about, about the future. But today is also called um, not just Boxing Day, but St. Stephen's Day. Now, Stephen was the first Christian martyr. You can read about him in, in the book of Acts. Uh, Paul had him stoned to death because he preached this magnificent sermon all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, and that, of course, uh, brought guilt on Paul and in the end uh, brought Paul to Christ. Uh, there's a prayer uh, in the Anglican Church uh, that is around this day, and I'm going to pray that prayer because it's good for us to think while we're enjoying our lunch and enjoying leftovers, for those uh, to think about those brothers and sisters in lands that are persecuted and even being put to death. Uh, and also to think obviously of our brothers and sisters in Belarus. We raised some money uh, in our uh, offering on Christmas day. And so it's good to remember these, these things. So here's the St. Stephen's Day prayer. Grant, O Lord, that in all our sufferings here on earth for the testimony of thy truth, we may steadfastly look up to heaven and by faith behold the glory that shall be revealed and being filled with the Holy Ghost may learn to love and bless our persecutors by the example of thy first martyr Stephen, who prayed for his murderers to thee. O bless Jesus, who standeth at the right hand of God to comfort all those who suffer for thee, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We're going to sing now uh, this wonderful song, Hope Has Come, Christ Has Come. He's the one that comes to liberate us from this world. Well, we thought it would be really nice uh, just to uh, 
look back a bit at what some of the uh, children had been learning. And so Dean's taking, taking us through the classes on a Sunday morning at Tiffin's. And then after that, Ben is going to open up the word of God. What group is this? Red is this, and blue. Is this red, and blue. red and blue group? They've joined forces today. So what have you been learning this, this term in uh, Cornerstone Kids? What have you been up to? Yes. You've been learning about David. Yes. King David. Tell me something about David. What did he do? Uh, he yeah. He killed Goliath. He did, yeah. What, what about you? He what? He trusted in God. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Merry Christmas! Is Paul Graham? Look! Whoa! <gasps> Hello, Orange Group. How are we doing? Hi. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Hey! hey. Um, and what have you been? What have you been learning this year? Why did you come to Cornerstone Kids? Yeah, to learn about God. To learn about God. Yeah, brilliant. And what? What? Uh, what stories? What stories have you been thinking about in the Bible? About David. About David. Who? King David. King David. Oh wow. Oh look, there's Rebecca. Hi Rebecca. How you doing? Nice to see you. Um, and what have you learned? What stories? What's your favourite story about David? Um, the one where <laughs> Hold on. Because he said sorry to Jesus was born. Oh, yeah. Bec My favourite part. Yeah. When saw weed in the cave. <laughs> when saw weed in the cave. <laughs> Mate, this is, what, this is what happens when you come to get real life footage. And now I'm going to go and leave you to clear up the mess. Thank you so much. There's Jamie. And that's Jamie. Yeah, See you soon. It's just pure gold. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yay. Is this Banana Group? No. Oh, what group is this? Oh, it's Colours, of course. Sorry. I don't have pressure. You have? What is that? I don't know. Like a present. Oh, you've got a present. present yeah. Santa yeah. sneaked in while we were not looking. Did he? In my house. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Santa behind me. I got a present. Oh, what is that? Oh yeah, Santa's. <gasps> oh, look at that. Who can tell me what stories you've been learning about in Yellow Group this term? Yeah, Ziki. You've been. Because I had another quiz and I have no idea what you lot are saying, but that's okay. I can see, I can see a baby on the floor. This was last week's lesson. That was last week's lesson. So a baby who was a oh. rescuer <gasps> and a judge. Do you oh, remember that? Wow. Some of Wait. you were here, some of you weren't. Yeah, brilliant. Oh. That's amazing, isn't it? Does anyone know who that baby was? <gasps> Jesus. Jesus! Oh, that's yeah. great! What? That's like Cornerstone Kids 101, isn't it? That yeah? Is. <laughs> yeah, it's great! <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful lesson and Merry Christmas and see you soon! Bye, everybody! Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye. Gonna go to Bible Tots! <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, hello. A Bible for you. Are you Esther? Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Esther, come sit down. Would you like a Bible? Oh, look at this. What have you got? This is the Bible. God's written word. It tells us how God made us. It tells us how God loves us. This is the Bible. God's written word. Stories of Jesus. Stories of Jesus. Hi Lily, hello Esther, hi, Merry Christmas! <laughs> oh look at this crash. Here's the, here's the crash, look, hi everybody. Is this how calm crash is every week? No, it's usually four times as many babies. Four times as many babies. But Merry Christmas, thanks for all you do, see you soon. Is that a soul? No, soul's not here. 
I'm so man. Yesterday we heard the Queen's speech uh, to the nation um, and actually we're recording this before Christmas um, so we've not heard it yet but I'm banking on her mentioning Jesus at some point and talking about the hope that he brings to a dark world full of uncertainty. Last year actually the Queen's speech was the most viewed TV slot over the whole of the Christmas period um, so Blankety Blank, the return of Blankety Blank had 5 million viewers um, Call the Midwife, the Christmas special, had 5.5 million viewers, but the Queen's speech had over 8 million viewers. So it's clear, isn't it? In times of crisis and uncertainty, we look to those um, of authority above us for comfort and leadership through difficult times. And to be honest, there's no one higher than the Queen of England, is there? Maybe even in the whole world, in terms of sort of uh, seniority and importance and someone who we look up to as a, an established, not never moving uh, sort of authority over our lives. Well, this morning, we are going to hear the King's speech to us and not just uh, a King, but the King of Kings. What has he got to say to us in a dark and uncertain world? What does he have to say even to our Queen? Um, and this is his word to us today. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have not lacked anything. This is what Moses spoke to the Israelites um, as their time in the wilderness uh, as that 40 years was approaching an end and he's speaking to them as an encouragement. Uh, he's trying to remind them of God's blessing to them throughout this past 40 years in the wilderness. And now if you know much about the Bible, you'll know that the Israelites grumbled a lot. They, they didn't see the last 40 years as much of a blessing, I don't think. Um, and I was thinking actually we would probably be worse than them as much as we like to sit in judgment of them because we were grumbling when there was no petrol in the petrol stations and yet our cars were full of petrol still <laughs> and our fridges were still full of food and we were grumbling but this is what we do this is what humans have always done we equate blessing we think god's blessing equals worldly comfort and peace rather than being in the lord's presence that's what we think blessing is worldly comfort and provision petrol in the petrol stations, toilet roll on the toilet roll holders, instead of blessing being in God's presence. Um, so the Israelites moaned in the wilderness. They said, oh, we remember the fish that we ate freely in Egypt, along with the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks, and the onions and the garlic. If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, they said. There we sat by pots of meat and ate our fill of bread. So they're remembering fondly the food that they enjoyed in Egypt, but actually they've forgotten that in Egypt they were slaves. They were captives in the dominion of darkness. They well, they were actually no people at all. They had no tabernacle. They had no covenant with the living God. They had no sort of direction or meaning or purpose. They were exiles and they were outside of the presence of God, but yet they had fish and they had cucumbers, and that is what they would prefer, a smoked salmon and cucumber sandwich over God. So the word of the Lord comes to these grumbling, moaning Israelites through Moses, and he says, he says these words that we read, the Lord your God has blessed you. He has blessed you. He brought you out of Egypt. Remember that? He severed the chains of slavery that for over 400 years had bound your wrists and your ankles. It cut deep into the flesh of the nation. He'd released his captive people from darkness. You were in a dark and hopeless situation and he brought you out into light and to freedom. Not only that, but then he adopted you as his children. He became a father to the fatherless. He gave you his laws. He made a covenant with you on Sinai. Out of the whole world, he chose you 
to be his chosen, beloved, precious, covenant people. You'd once been at the bottom of the pile, stinking, festering and rotting in in Egypt, but now you're a chosen and sanctified priesthood to the world. God has chosen you as, as his prophets, that salvation might come to the Gentiles through you. You've come from stinking Egypt to being the mouthpieces of the living God. You'd seriously still rather have your fish sandwich than all of that. But wait a minute, not only has he saved you out of Egypt, but he's even watched over your journey through this vast wilderness. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, we read, He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. So, yes, the wilderness was a dangerous place and there was plenty actually to be afraid of. And there are things in our lives that are dangerous. I mean, we, we send our children off to schools knowing that there are snakes and scorpions waiting there to devour them with wicked and false ideologies and worldviews. But the Lord is not blind to our situation. He sees every snake along the path. He sees every scorpion hiding in the bushes. He knows the difficulties that are around us today. And he knows the difficulties that we're going to come across tomorrow. He knows because he watches over us. And so he leads us through this valley of the shadow of death. In Exodus 13, we we read, By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So whether it was a cloud or a pillar of fire, God back then as he does to us today by his word, he was leading his people through this wilderness and never once did he sleep or slumber. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you, says Moses, and you have not lacked anything. Every single day, every single day, without fail, no matter what they came across, he was with them. Now, the world, Uh, would look at the Israelites and their experience in the wilderness and say, actually, they lacked an awful lot. They lacked a huge amount. They didn't have permanent homes. They didn't have any land of their own to cultivate or stick a flag in and say, this is ours. They never had respite from the harsh desert conditions. They uh, suffered greatly in many different ways. But God says that they lacked nothing. Why? These 40 years... The Lord your God has been with you and you have not lacked anything. The reason the wilderness is better than the smoked salmon sandwich is because the Lord their God was with them. They had 40 years of God's love, God's protection, God's provision. God's presence is the best thing we can have in this life and the next. My my Spanish grandfather once said, The best thing about salvation is not liberty, it's the saviour. The best thing about heaven is not eternal life, it's the eternal life giver. The best thing about glory is the God of glory. So when God saved his people out of slavery, he gave them something far better than just freedom from captivity, far better than just from respite from the chains and the whips. He gave them himself. That's why anyone who says, you know, I've been forgiven, so I can just do what I like now. It doesn't really matter. God's going to forgive me, has completely misunderstood the gospel. We haven't been saved to do what we like. We've been saved for Christ. Our gospel is not freedom. Our gospel is Christ. Adam found that out for himself when he had access to the whole Garden of Eden. Everything God had blessed Uh, the pinnacle of mankind with, he found that the whole garden is meaningless if you are not right with God. And the Israelites came to learn this for themselves. So God once threatened to send an angel ahead of them. He was so fed up with them instead of himself. He said, I'm going to send an angel because if I go with you, I might kill you. And, And the whole nation, we're told, mourned. Everyone mourned. And Moses begged 
If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. In other words, there's nowhere in the world Moses would rather take his people, even out of the wilderness, even if it was into abundant provision and comfort and smoked salmon sandwiches, if it meant God was not there. Don't take us even to the best place on earth if you're not there. They knew that the presence of God is the treasure of this life. And if you had the whole world, but not God, you would still lack everything. But if you had nothing in this world, like Israel in the wilderness, yet you had God, you lack nothing. Jesus asked his disciples, when I sent you without purse, bag of sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing was their response. Now, this was put to the test. All of this was put to the test as Israel approached the end of their time in the wilderness. Um, Moses dies and a new leader, Joshua, is raised up by God to lead the people into the promised land. And as Joshua stood looking out at the bank of the River Jordan, which was fast flowing and swollen because it was in flood season, he's given this instruction by God to get ready to cross it. He says in Joshua chapter one, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them. And now picture Joshua here. He's standing at this riverbank. He's got no boats at his disposal. Uh, the Israelites haven't been dragging boats around the wilderness for 40 years. He's got no means to build a bridge across it. Who in Israel knows how to build a bridge? Uh, or has the means or the tools or the equipment to do that. There's actually no safe or obvious way to get an entire nation across this dangerous river. But immediately, Joshua gives orders to the people to get ready to cross. Now, what on earth is Joshua's confidence that this can be done? Well, I think it's because of one tiny line that God says to him in the middle of these instructions, which changes everything. He says this, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. He invites Joshua to look back in order to be able to look forward with confidence. See how in the wilderness for 40 years you lacked nothing because I was with Moses. So cast your eyes forward so shall you lack nothing as you cross the Jordan and enter into the promised land because I will also be with you. That's the confidence Joshua had. He didn't actually know yet how God was going to get them across the river. He didn't know that. He doesn't actually find out until the day. But he believed he would be able to get an entire nation across this swollen torrent of a river because he looked back and he saw how God had been with them this far, actually through way more complicated and dire circumstances. And so he looked forward with the promise that God was going to go on with them. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. My presence will go with you and you will lack nothing. So what about us then now? We uh, stand on the shores of 2022. We're looking out across it. The wilderness of 2020 and 2021 are behind us and there are gonna be more years of wilderness ahead. Um, and I don't really just mean COVID because even if all the COVID disappeared from the face of the earth, you would still find yourself in a sinful and wretched and broken world. So until we cross that final river of death ourselves um, or the Lord Jesus returns, we're gonna be in the wilderness. So what challenges lie before you as you sit here on Boxing Day now? What torrent of water looks impossible for you to cross? What's fast flowing and flooding before you that just that you haven't got answers to? You don't know how you're going to get across it. Well, the Lord invites you to look back. As he was with Moses, as he was with Joshua, as he was with the apostles, as he was with the early church fathers, as he was with the reformers, as he was with the Puritans, as he was with those in our own congregation who have gone on before us, as he was with those in our own families 
who have gone on before us, as he was with them, so he will be with us. Jesus says, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He is Emmanuel, God with us. We're living temples of the Holy Spirit. Christ can dwell in our hearts through faith. So whatever you've got this Christmas, or whatever you didn't get, um, whatever pain or sorrow you are suffering at this time, whatever joyful memories you have made, this is the word of the King for you today. Remember, you don't just have gifts. Better than that, you have the gift giver. You don't just have comfort in sorrow. Better than that, you have the comforter. And you don't just have joy. Better than that, you have the joyful one. And when you have Jesus, when you live your days in the presence of the living God, whatever else may come, whatever desert you find yourself in, you will find ultimately you have lacked nothing. My, my grandfather preached this exact passage back in 2008 and really I've just, I've been so inspired by it. I've, I've, I've re-preached a lot of it today. But there's one thing that really stuck in, in my mind when, when I heard him preach his sermon. And bearing in mind, he loved the prophets and the apostles and the church fathers. They were his life's work. Um, he loved them. And bearing in mind, he loved my grandmother uh, who passed away the year or two before he preached the sermon. She was his whole world. Bearing in those two things in mind, this is what he said. He said, in heaven, I will see the prophets I will see the apostles, I will see the church fathers, and I will see my wife again. But better and greater than all of these, I will see the Lord Jesus Christ. The presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the best thing we can have in this world and the next. Everything else is sinking sand. So on the shores of 2022, he invites you to look back in order to look forward and have confidence that he's with you today. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have not lacked anything. Let me pray. Father, would you forgive us when we look around us and we look at our lives and we, we see a lack of something. We see a lack of petrol or we see a lack of fish or we see a lack of uh, whatever it is. Uh, forgive us when we look to worldly provision uh, for blessing. Thank you that in your word you, you, you show us so clearly that the greatest blessing, the only thing that really counts at the end of the day is your presence uh, and being right with you and living each day in step with you. Help us to look back and see how you were with your people, how you never once slept or slumbered and help us to have confidence that therefore you will go with us. Um, you will be with us as the Lord Jesus promised, even until the very end of the age. And would that give us confidence today to live rightly to live boldly and courageously uh, for him. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, for the years, your love has kept and guided. I stand in spite as she us on our way. And save us, pardon and provide. Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. Lord, for thy word, the word of life which bursts us, speaks to our hearts and sets our souls ablaze, teaches and trains, rebukes us and inspires us, Lord of the world, receive your people.
Okay, welcome. This is the way in which we normally record our podcasts, if you listen to our reg- regular podcast series. Um, but we just thought we would do something a little bit different, a bit special on this Boxing Day service. And uh, we wanted to spend some time discussing Ben's main point that he brought out in his talk about the Lord's presence with his people. He was with them and he promises that he will be with them in the future. And uh, it is wonderful and encouraging that as a church, we, we know those same truths, that the Lord has been with us over the past year, is with us and will be with us and we just wanted to spend a bit of time uh, rejoicing in that together yeah well i think we 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 know that he's been with us um and i mean this is so important is because he's given us his word mm. he's he's not taken away the word from us and uh we've been able to uh look into the word listen to the word uh be challenged by the word be encouraged by the word right the way throughout covid days when we couldn't meet yeah, you know, right, the way, right the way through the church as well, right? And right the way through the church, from the old to the yeah. youngest. It's been so <laughs> encouraging, all the work that the youth and the children's workers have done in, in giving that word. And that, we mustn't despise that. That is actually God speaking to us. So he hasn't sent us out, you know, away from speaking to us. Even though we're in the wilderness, he mm. communicates and speaks to us. Mm-hmm. And and that's who Jesus is, isn't it? He, Jesus is, you know, the same today yesterday and forever mm. uh, and uh, he is the word of the lord speaking yep. to us that's a real blessing yeah and one of the points i very quickly went over in the sermon was um uh the by night there was the pillar of fire by day there was the pillar of cloud and it was to light their path and there's some really obvious connections to the word of god being a light for our path and a lamp for our feet mm. um so the word of god is the equivalent of the pillar of fire and the cloud that the Israelites had so um, and we, we used to we used to talk about how uh, preaching to a camera um, wasn't really preaching but yet God in his kindness I think still ministered to people through his words didn't, didn't he um, and so even though today we've had to watch a TV uh, service again the Lord's word has still been opened and hmm. he's still ministering to us through it yeah, and, 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 go yeah on, no, I was just going to say that, like we haven't we haven't st- uh, stayed still, stayed still either. Actually. We haven't stayed still. Um, we well, you haven't. You're just wiggling all over the place. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do when I get up. To yeah. Yeah. You know, just kick everything. No, I, but, but we've been preaching for other churches, uh, fight club um, preachers. Um, there's been events at the hub all year as well. Easter tractor trail, um, stuff at Halloween, stuff at Christmas. We haven't been sitting back and just taking in the word we've been trying to get the word out uh, to our community as well we? We, we can, you know which is a real yeah. real real blessing it's, it's massively important i mean thinking about light israel was supposed to be a light to the world um and that and we, we were saying earlier on they weren't great were they yeah. um but but that's our job isn't it it's you know we're a light to the world and and jesus is the light of the world and so we need to tell the world about jesus and we've been trying to do that in our little patch and i i think as as a preacher and you know, just a, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ in in the Scriptures, um, we've seen things uh, that we wouldn't have seen. Uh, things have become very clearer, you know, um, to us, but also to our nation. You know, that the fact that we're we're mortal, uh, there's there's stuff to fear, um, uh, and uh, you know, in one sense, God, in His kindness, is warning. Uh, you know, getting attention uh, of people, and we've been trying to, by God's grace, to tap into that and, and speak out mm. with all of our podcasts and yeah. all of the things that we've mm. been trying to do. Yeah. Mm. So, very, very grateful for God's presence with us mm. uh, in the in this year. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. What about the future? 
Yeah, well, the future we're hoping to do um, to do more of that in, in the sense that we want to keep getting uh, the message of Christ out to the to the world. Because although there's a sense in which God's people go through the wilderness, uh, there's another sense which uh, there's millions of people in this country who are in a, an even darker wilderness in the sense that they're without God and without hope in this world and um, are perishing apart from Christ. And and so we need to keep keep going and getting the message out. Uh, one small way in which we want to do that is with uh, with this course that we're running in January, Hope Explored. It's a new course from the Christianity Explored Ministries team. And uh, it's a three session course starting on the 13th of Jan, uh, 20th and then 27th. People can register on our website. It's a great thing to invite friends to. It's online. Um, so, um, you know, so wherever we are in terms of COVID restrictions, it might turn out that that was a great decision, who knows, but um, so that's just one way um, that, that we want to keep getting the message out. And as you you know said in your sermon, um, our greatest assurance and confidence going into next year is that God is a covenant God and that he's promised even despite our sin and in suffering that he's going to be with us and not forsake us and he's going to build his church through us. Um, so that's great, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking, uh, absolutely, and, and we've got to keep carrying on doing what we do, haven't we? As a church, loving each other, serving each other, hearing the word preached together, mm -hmm. uh, worshipping together. We've got to just carry on. Um, it's nothing new, is there? Uh, and, you know, that's our... Because we've got a future in, in heaven yeah. uh, where we're... And we're, build, we're kind of building the future as we speak as yeah. well. I mean, you know, think about the, the, the growth in the church, like, physically, yeah. over the last year, mm -hmm. all the babies and all the kids and... <laughs> And I just, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm struck again by these, these words. Uh, these forty years, the Lord your God has been with you. He, you know, um, Moses was speaking to a, a, a new generation. Lots of these people here were not older than twenty. Mm. You know, so how, how could, you know, they could say, well, how can God say He's been with us for forty years? But you know, He's, um, He, he it's, it's supposed to point us to the that we're connected to the past. Mm. You know, it, that these are our people. This, mm. this is our clan. This is our tribe, mm. and this is our God, and He mm. kept His promise to us. Yeah, and he, you know, and he, and he will do it going forward. Yeah, yeah so. and and, and mm. it's it, you know not only the preaching of the Word of God, just the the, the loving acts that have gone on, uh, you know, continuously throughout the the days of COVID, uh, and I hope that carries on mm. if whatever the days are coming. We we don't know what's going to happen, do we, with this. Mm and what government's decisions are and all these sort of stuff. Um, but we've got to carry on as church, which is loving each other, serving each other. Mm. Yeah, so mm. we've got a great a great hope and a great future and a great family. Mm. Brilliant. Should we pray? Yeah. Father, we thank you for that great message. And uh, we thank you, Lord, that you are uh, with us, that you have been with us in this past year, that you promised to be with us um, by the spirit of your son, Jesus. Uh, we pray that you'd help us to keep looking to you and uh, we pray that we might be able to reach more people uh, for the glory of your Son. Amen. Amen. Just one thing before we go, though. In your sermon, you were quoting your granddad, who's yes. Spanish. Oh, yes. And I love it when you go, whatever it is, do yeah. a Spanish uh, thing. What was that phrase? Uh, and can you do it in Spanish? Oh, um, and can I you do to, it like your granddad? Uh, I, just, I would have to practice it. Um, yeah. What is it? Uh, he said, um, en el cielo voy a ver um, los apóstoles uh, y voy a ver mi novia, pero mejor que todos voy a ver Jesús. Great. What's yeah. that mean? That says, in heaven, I'm going to see the apostles. I'm going to see my wife, but better than all of them, I'll see Jesus. Brilliant. Guides my ways in righteousness.
Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you really enjoyed that, but not only just enjoyed that, but actually were challenged by that and asked the Lord to help us to go forward with the good news of Christ, uh, not knowing quite what uh, the next year is going to uh, present to us. Um, do remember Hope Explored. Uh, if you've got any friends uh, or family that would come on that, uh, look out for that. Um, and also the walk, we're going on the walk. Uh, we should be there soon, so you need to put that coffee down and get running to Kingston Gate, where Dean will be uh, leading us on the walk. See you there. <laughs>